taping outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. Just a few seconds ago, this happened. This video is sponsored by All Dreams because we all have dreams. Supportalldreams.org. One valuable lesson any person can learn is to stay the course. Stay on your own path and have confidence in that path. There's so much noise in the world right now that it's extremely hard to stay on course. So many distractions, so many so-called opportunities that may take us away from what we're actually supposed to be doing. As for me, I'm sharing this because I had no reason being in the trucking space. That's where I start the ending to this story. The definition of experience has eight ways of explaining the same definition. I will use this one, experience. Something personally encountered, undergone, or lived through. Right now, I'm writing this email to my business partner to explain what has happened in the last two months. But let me tell you where this all started. I decided to jump into the box truck game in September of 2021. I researched and then we financed a 2017 international through a company named Balboa Capital by way of a broker in Dallas named Commercial Fleet Financing. This is the dealer that the broker Commercial Fleet Financing referred us to. His name is Sim Jaboa, and his company is named Omega Worldwide Auto. Before taking the truck, I had to test drive it, and the truck would not excel over 10 miles per hour. Five minutes into the test drive, I ended up on the side of the road. Day one, baby. Day one. It's all right. Got to move and groove. Monday morning comes, I get a, a text at seven o'clock in the morning and the text says, come pick up the truck Tuesday at 4 p.m. Now this is after a bunch of text messages after me talking to the finance guy because the finance guy is the one that actually um, introduced me to the dealer because they run deals together. And I'm like, at this point, is, is this motherfucker even rep reputable, right? So, in this long story, today is the day I'm actually going to pick up the truck and we will see. It's, when, it's Wednesday now. Yeah, it's Wednesday now. So, we'll actually see if this shit happens or whatever. There it is. Oh, man, you see. Hold on, though, man. Look like... Don't look like I can drive off with the motherfucker. Don't look ready. This is it though. This don't definitely don't look ready. The dealer, Sim Jaboa, turned out to be a pastor crook truck dealer. The 
finance company wired him $47,000 before I even test drove the truck. When I wanted to unwind the deal because the truck was inoperable, he ran off with the money, never paying it back. And he did that two times with the same finance company equaling $90,000 without delivering neither of the trucks. That guy right there is the reason I'm getting sued for almost $80,000 over a box truck. Here's the summons. So my box truck business didn't start good at all. And I told my friend Reed about everything that had happened. Big deal, all dreams. My guy, Reed, right. good friend of mine first off and now a business partner. And uh, that's right. We're about to take it, we're about to take this out. This is the first box truck we have right here. Hopefully we go to a 50, to a 100, you know, build a big company, help a lot of people. And, uh, Help people achieve a lot of dreams. And that's you know that's the goal. And yeah, I'm happy to be doing it with you, man. I know. Hey, two former basketball players. Let's see if we can run a good business together. <laughs> make some make some assistant business. It's sure. gonna be fun. Appreciate you. All right, brother. Love you. Love you too. See you. Yeah. All right. Bobo's on this joint. It's a big, huge elephant, though. It's hard. That's hard. So as you've seen for seven episodes, I have drove across this country to many cities in the dreams truck. I had to get the footage in front of the Wyoming sign. You feel what I'm saying? Where am I today? That is the question. Pass is in. Foot. Idaho. That's what I dropped off these meters. This is like this is like a new this is like new technology right here. In each city, connecting with dreamers. Like the price of the, the price of my dream is just you know sacrificing time. Time is like. You know, it's the most valuable thing we got. You know what I'm saying? Those out there chasing your dreams, dreams are possible. You just have to dream up. Right now, right now I'm in Dallas, Texas. Um, man, went across the country, came back, went across from uh, Fort Worth to um, Arkansas, Arkansas to... Memphis to pick something up, Memphis to Charlotte. On the way to Charlotte, stopped in Atlanta, grabbed a suitcase, and um, had to stay in Charlotte because I had to drop something off. Left Charlotte Monday morning, came and got to Dallas Tuesday. And enough time to drop off what I had on my truck. I haven't been using Jervin's dispatching, uh, so I've basically been Dispatching myself for the past few days. That's what's that's what's been going on. So today I have a load going from Dallas to New Mexico. Um, it's paying like a dollar ninety per mile, somewhere around that range. And I've never been to New Mexico, shit. So why not go? Um, yeah. So that's where we at right now. As far as business wise, as far as business wise. Um, I we, you know, me and Reed jumped in this in a partnership, and we're just seeing how it goes. And the thing is, uh, right now, insurance is due. I have the gas card due. That's about nine grand. I only have like close to four grand in the account right now. So, shit. By the 18th, I mean, I have to uh, be able to pay off the, you know, pay off these things or whatever. So. I'm not sure if I'm even making money yet, but I always have money, but I'm not sure how profitable this business is. My entrepreneurship career has been a long, lonely journey. I usually put all the images out like everything is going great. Get it right, get it right. 
New Mexico. But in reality, I'm a month away from losing everything. Now check this out, because I'm having some problems with the truck. This, do you hear that? Do you hear this? It's a not, I'm, it's not supposed to be sound like that. I don't know, this thing, I don't know what's going on. And if this truck happened to go down, everything is over. I'm getting to the point where I don't even know if this All Dreams brand will ever make it to where I envision it. It doesn't help being on the road for weeks at a time, where all I have is time to think. The optimist in me says to keep going. The insecurities in me says to keep showing a highlight reel. And the reality in me says, you need a complete change. So I look at this guy and I say, how far am I away from being him? And I think that's what a lot of people don't understand about being an entrepreneur. It's no safety net. And the question every entrepreneur has to ask is, when do you give up? When do you shut down the business? So what length of time do you give the business when you're not making money? And do you pivot because you're passionate about this business? These are questions that nobody has the answer to. Is this decisions that you have to make within yourself and by asking God? Um, yeah, in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So I'm gonna try this Amazon stuff. I did a load which I shouldn't have, but it's 15 minutes away. And it says like two hours, three hours or something like that. But it's saying it's only going like a mile away. So I don't know, but I figure I might as well make some content about it because what happens when you like kind of like stuck, you feel me, someplace like this and you can't get out. And you got to do Amazon to make some money. You don't want to continue to spend money and money on, on hotels and you're not making no money. The only thing is at least you could break even if you do some Amazon until you can get a out of there. So, yeah. Listen, believing in yourself is a superpower. I just remind myself over and over again that what I'm doing has a bigger purpose than me. It's not even an option to think about giving up. I also get reminded when I meet random people along the journey. Yo, so last night I went to the Amazon uh, facility or whatever. I did a run for Amazon and I met my homeboy. He actually from New York, live out here. He worked at the Amazon uh, spot and uh, came and picked me up and he showed me a little bit around New Mexico or Albuquerque. And, uh, I have a couple beers. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. This is my man right here, you know what I'm saying? Showing me around Albuquerque, you feel me? Got the most stepped, on my, stepped on my Yeezys, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm continually fascinated by the stories of people. And my question to JD was, how did you get to Albuquerque of all places from New York? And what was your overall dream? Aviation high school. It's like that super exclusive high school in New York where uh, it's like only a limited amount of people can get in. So it was like, I don't know, maybe like 2,000 people, whatever it is, for how many thousands of people. So I went to the orientation and all that. Uh, but for some, for some reason, just uh, mom's just like you know, the white collar type, you know, job, business, degree. You know, I guess the greasy hands wasn't what she had in mind, you know, despite you know, what it might have led to. 
high example shortages right now in aviation, shortages of pilots and all that. You know what I mean? But uh, especially uh, pilots of color. But you know, nonetheless, same thing happens for me. I said I would have never met my shorty. I never had my kids. And you can't really question it. But uh, you know what I mean? That's, that's why I didn't go about my dream job. What I never pursued. Man, this dude wanted to be a pilot. How dope is that? He just never got the chance to pursue that dream. Life happened, he got into a relationship, had a daughter, and just worked. He also said that he looked into an aviation school in Arizona, but it would be too expensive for him to pay for. We only have one life. We should pursue the things that will fulfill us. Because before you know it, it could be too late. She was telling you this, bro. Yeah, that's true. Look at what Am I lying? No. Am I lying? No, no. This is coming from my heart, bro. No, that's real. Okay. You also can't be afraid to take the shot, neither. You can't. You miss 100% of the shots you don't Absolutely. take. Bro. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. That's In JD's case, I immediately had an idea. This wasn't a new idea. This idea was what I envisioned the company All Dreams to be doing. Basically, supporting All Dreams. Before the company was named All Dreams, in 2013, I started this with Jordan and Julio, two children that were in my We All Have Dreams documentary. You got your name on this. Box Lee, inspired by Jordan. We made a specific design inspired by both kids and put it on t-shirts. This kid from Brooklyn, other kid from Long Island, other kid from Long Island. These shirts is inspired by them, by their by they stories. After the two children passed and I was not able to help both kids achieve their dream, I halted the idea. I want to bring this idea back for dreamers like JD, where we make special collections to help raise money for their dreams. And this is what I came up with. The JD Flyer Flight School Design. Believe and achieve all dreams. Um, not sure if it's still, if it's still something that's a real viable long-term business for anybody that's trying to get into the box truck game. Uh, expenses, uh, being away from home, the time on the road, maintenance for your truck and things like that. So I'm not sure if it's, if, it's a, if it's a viable thing, whereas you could just do something else. Uh, I believe I have a luxury because I have a partner, but then also I have a little bit of a different motive, which is filming his content as well, and filming his journey as well, which definitely helps me along the way in doing this. Taping outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. Just a few seconds ago, this happened. So that's shattered glass. This could have been way worse. While driving down the mountains of the Interstate 81, the 5,000 pound spool of wiring broke off the pallet, rolled and busted into the door. And when I stopped, busted through the trailer. Oh, 
what do you even do in this situation? The truck can still drive, but the freight needs to be secured so it can be dropped off. So what I've been doing is I've been stopping and I have been checking the freight. It's just important to check this stuff from now, you know, like to momentarily, I'm like probably, uh, I would say about a hundred miles, 100, 120 miles from Atlanta. They're gonna try to get this thing off of the truck. This is it. Out of commission. You know, um, don't know for how long, but So this needs to be a, a, a shirt. Broken dreams with the, the elephant having a sling on, upside down. <laughs> yeah. I had been on the road nonstop since January. The truck repair guy said it would take two months for the truck to be completely repaired. I decided to take a trip to Colombia and try to film a pilot for a series I've been wanting to do called Citizen of the World. While in Colombia, I met German, John and Abraham. This experience changed my life. When I got back to the United States, it was also time to move out of my apartment. Yo, this is moving day. And after two years living in Atlanta, it was time to move out of Icon. This is it. My partner Reed was going to be away for a while, but I didn't know for how long, and we lost contact for almost two months. With everything that transpired in my box truck journey, I decided that it was time to move on from the vision of building a 50 truck box truck company. Everything in the box truck journey just continued to bring me back to my purpose. I believe everybody can achieve whatever they want to achieve. The purpose of telling stories and building all dreams. No matter where I went, it smacked me in the face. My truck was sitting on a mechanic's lot for almost two months. With what I experienced in Colombia, in my 40 years experience in the United States, I didn't even want to live in the U.S. any longer. So I decided to sell my truck and move to Colombia and go after a career of telling stories and helping dreamers across the world. This is the risk that I've been scared to take, but I decided I was going to do it. So what's going on? How y'all doing? Jervin Trap. Jervin Trap. The guy that dispatched me on my first over the road experience. I told him that my truck was for sale and he referred me to a guy named BJ. What we got going on today? <laughs> Man, we're going to look at the truck. We're going to uh, check it out, have it looked at, saw some contracts, you know, do all of that stuff. Me and my man Hassan, we want to uh, want to purchase this truck, man, so I can keep on chasing my dream, you know what I mean? He can keep chasing his. 
And what's that, man? So tell me, so talk about your dream, man. What you man, my dream uh, kind of changed a lot over the years. Uh, at first, I just wanted to do certain things, uh, like when I started my shoe business. I just wanted to do certain things to be able to make, you know, substantial amounts of money. But uh, now it's about uh, I want to own a company, you know, that that grosses a lot, that takes care of my family, you know, that my family can be proud of. People can look at me and, and be proud of them as well. So that's kind of my new dream. He was the perfect guy to continue the Dream Truck legacy. BJ didn't have the 50000 cash price tag, but he was a dreamer, so I made a deal with him for him to make payments because we got into this to help dreamers. So this situation was like deja vu. It happened again. The person I was referred to, BJ, just like when I first got into the box truck game in September 2021, when I was referred to Sims Yaboa, and he ran off with the 47000 that was wired to him. BJ, or Braylon Sims, owner of BJ Trucking Co., ran off with the Dreams truck to Dallas without paying the agreed amount. And it looks like it's going to be a $40,000 loss. And I'm going to tell you to never do business with anyone with the name Sims. Ironically, my adversaries were named Sims Yaboa and Braylon Sims. Something that was so good. You know, build a big company, help a lot of people, and uh, help people achieve a lot of dreams. Which was to help dreamers will be forever tainted. And if you've watched my box truck journey along the way, You've seen that I'm just a regular guy. On the way to New York City, I'm taking this stuff to NYU, which is pretty cool. You know what I'm saying? NYU is a, a school that, man, I wish that I could have had attended NYU for uh, for filmmaking. You know, that would have been pretty, you know, that, that would have been dope. Trying to build my company. Even in all dreams, man. So I work too. And take care of my family. Getting two of y'all packaging these hoodies and sweatshirts. We got the peach all-time favorite right here. We got the orange, we got the red, black and red, we got the white, we got just heads, we got full body, we got black. Come on now. <laughs> so if you remember in the beginning of this episode when I said I had no business being in the box truck business, that's why. Because a lot of these people are scammers and they only have a short-term vision and that's to get what they want while they can i can't wait to see what he gonna do next it's gonna be big you know chase all dreams what's up what's up what's up, what's up? Really? <laughs> and that's where i end this story as i send this final email to my business partner look we should all dream to be something in this world hope and aspirations look that's really all we have and every single morning you should wake up and that should drive you. When we believe we can achieve our dreams, but then we have to do the work. But you also have to have a vision. Look, if this is something that you believe in just as well as I believe in, I'm personally asking you to support my business by purchasing my clothing designs from my brand, All Dreams. Look, my content is about investing back into dreamers. That's what I've been doing for over 10 years. And you can go back and look at my We All Have Dreams movie. I've been doing it. My thing is, like, as a, as a, as a black man, how can you do that, do these things to another black man? But it don't even matter because I'm not gonna let these suckers win because it's purpose over everything. And we're gonna get the hoops in Palenque and we're gonna travel the world and tell the stories of dreamers and support them with their dreams. But again, I need your contribution. I need your help in order to do these things. And that's what it is. I appreciate you guys for watching. All dreams, baby. Peace.